I have no idea where to even start this video. Hey friends, my name is Gabrielle and welcome to Remy's Reads. It's like 3am and I just finished Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I was at Barnes & Noble for four hours. My friends and I got there at eight. Book didn't start selling until 12. One of my friends actually won a nine and three quarters pass, and so we were actually one of the first people to buy it at the Barnes & Nobles. And I got home at 12.30, and it's about three, and I finished it about half an hour ago, and I have some thoughts. First things first, can I say how wonderful it was to be going back into the world of Harry Potter, to be able to go to Barnes & Noble and go to a mini night release and just be back in that fandom and culture again and it just felt so amazing. I'm already gonna say this review is biased because I am a huge Potterhead and I love Harry Potter and you know I was always going to love this book but I have some thoughts on it and I'm definitely going to give you guys a very balanced review. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child takes place 19 years after the Battle of Hogwarts. It mainly focuses on Albus who we met at the end of the Deathly Hallows who is Harry's middle child, his youngest son, and his experiences living in the shadow of his father. Meanwhile, past threats also come into play with these characters and it forces all the characters to basically come together and put aside differences and address how these past threats affect their future. Good points first is that the book takes place and nothing is perfect. There are so many flaws and you know there are so many different conflicts happening at once in this novel. There is the conflict between Harry and Albus who don't always see eye to eye and Harry finds it really hard to connect with Albus. There's conflicts between Albus and the kids at school because he is the Potter child who doesn't fit in and ultimately the struggle that between Harry's experiences at Hogwarts and how Albus's are completely different where Harry found Hogwarts to be kind of a soulless and a safe zone Albus finds it to be just somewhere that he's forced to go to all of our favorite characters are there obviously we have the golden trio we have McGonagall we have just so many different blasts from the past that we're getting again but they are different from what we are used to seeing but they are still recognizable at their core so I thought that was done really well their aging and how even though they are adults now you could see glimpses of the characters that we read from as children or young adults or just whenever we read the Harry Potter series we see the glimpses of the original characters that we fell in love with. What I also thought was really great is that it almost seemed as if JK Rowling took into consideration all of the headcanons and theories that we had about the Harry Potter world and incorporated them a little bit into this book and I thought that that was really great that it seemed that the authors paid attention to all the work that had been put in into figuring out all these different aspects of the Harry Potter universe and then they took them and put them into the script and it's almost a, like a wave to those of us in the fandom. It was also really interesting to me to read this as a script. It's so different from other books that we've seen in the Harry Potter world. So while I definitely love that it brought new aspects and a new medium to the Harry Potter world, I also feel like in a way it kind of distanced the characters from us I guess you could say because we are seeing and reading less of Harry and Hermione and Ron as characters, even the children involved, so Albus and all the other um, second generation of the Weasley Potter family. We are more removed from them, more distance, because it's it's more of a script. It's much more meant to be seen and not read. Even though when you're reading it, it's still really great. It's a wonderful experience. It does feel like there's a little bit more distance between the characters and therefore it kind of, it makes it different from a typical Harry Potter book, which is what's something that they did tell us about. Just as a fan, I just, I did kind of wish to have that connection again with the characters and not feel as if it was a little bit removed. And I honestly would give, you know, anything. I would give my left lung, probably not, but let's just keep going with that, to go and see this play in person. But as a book and as a fan of the original Harry Potter 7, which I guess is now what I'm calling them, it was a little bit disappointing to kind of have that removal. And this is not really a negative, but it's just kind of a point that I would like to make. This script is definitely going to cause a ton of rewrites and views and changed canons of what happened after the Battle of Hogwarts, which is not a bad thing. Like, I think it's great that we have new material to pull from, but but I am also acknowledging the fact that there are those in the community who are going to have conflicts with this because it's not going to match up with the different theories that we've been passing around in general for so long. This is going to be 
both the best thing for people to spin off new theories of and also the worst thing because so many people's theories are going to be crushed. My overall opinion, I loved it. I thought that this this was amazing. I thought the script was wonderful. Any person who has ever enjoyed Harry Potter, whether it's the movies or the books or both, this would be great because it still embodies the magical universe that we have come to know and love and it also has our favorite characters in it but it takes it and it grows. So as people who have become fans of this have grown, so have the characters in the books. It's just such a great contribution because we finally have a little bit more of that closure of what happened after Hogwarts? What happened to Harry and Hermione and Ron? And how did their actions affect the wizarding world years later? There are just so many great things about this book that I cannot talk about without spoiling it. Like everything that made us fall in love with Harry Potter and the wizarding world in general is present in here. So I just think that you guys should read it, even if you've never been involved with it before. So that concludes my review of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And in all honesty, it is about 4 a.m. now probably and I am exhausted. So I will end my review here. If you guys haven't seen my last video, then make sure you stick around all the way to the end because it will be playing right after this. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments below. If you guys have read or gotten The Cursed Child yet, then please let me know what your opinions are so far because I am dying and everyone else I know is lagging on reading it and I get, yeah, it's the first day and I've already finished it. So I may have to actually reread it again. But if you guys have started reading it, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, then make sure you do so because I upload bookish videos twice a week. That is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching and, and I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. Hopefully my camera's in one of these boxes because as of now I can't find it and that's a little depressing.